Talking about the High Court of Australia will do wonders for this video's audience retention. But trust me, this gets interesting. I want to run through a textbook example of how Scott Morrison muddies the truth to get out of whatever mess he's put himself in. Let's start with a simple question in Parliament. Thanks, Speaker. The question of the Prime Minister is why then did the Prime Minister support Clive Palmer's High Court case to tear down the West Australian borders? The Prime Minister has the call. Again, Mr Speaker, that the member must be misinformed because the Commonwealth did not pursue that case. The Commonwealth did Members not pursue that case. And it is erroneous to suggest that, Mr Speaker, that that, that that is what the government did. The government did not pursue that case, Mr Speaker, at all. We did not pursue that case. And the Labor Party continues to push this falsehood around in, around the country, Mr Speaker, as they have it as they have a habit of doing. What they are talking about is the Western Australian hard border. Western Australia's Premier, Mark McGowan, and his Labor government has put in place strict border conditions since the start of the pandemic. In May 2020, mining billionaire Clive Palmer applied for permission to enter the state and was refused. A few days later, he launched a lawsuit against Western Australia in the High Court. The High Court of Australia will have a chance to determine whether Mark Gowan is a fool or not. For 90% of you who are about to click off because I've mentioned a lawsuit, this isn't so much about the case itself, but it is worth going through the high-level background. Clive Palmer was arguing in court that Western Australia's border restrictions were unconstitutional and were therefore invalid. He claimed that there was a violation of Section 92 of the Australian Constitution, which says that trade, commerce and intercourse amongst the states shall be absolutely free. So where does the Morrison government come in? The question Scott Morrison was asked in Parliament was why he supported Clive Palmer's case. And he said over and over again that they did not pursue it. We did not pursue that case, Mr Speaker. We did not pursue that case. That is not what occurred. It's worth noting that the case was happening at the very start of the pandemic. Imagine how embarrassing it would be if instead of doing his job and securing vaccines and sorting out our quarantine system, Scott Morrison was instead spending his time and public money helping Clive Palmer fight Western Australia's health measures in court. I'm sure it's no surprise though, but that is exactly what happened. In May 2020, the High Court challenge was launched by Clive Palmer. A few weeks later, Christian Porter, then the Attorney General of Australia, filed a notice of intervention on behalf of the Morrison government. He stated clearly that the government was intervening in support of the position of the plaintiffs. The plaintiffs being Clive Palmer and his company. This document wasn't publicly available at the time, which is important because the government was pushing a very different story. As time went on, Christian Porter started saying in interviews, we're not assisting Clive Palmer, we're assisting the court. This was the go-to line for the government. Scott Morrison also said in press conferences that he's not supporting Clive Palmer. Why is the federal government supporting Clive Palmer in his high court challenge to, against WA's hard border? Well, let me be clear. Um, we're not supporting Clive Palmer. Two days after that press conference, the Western Australian government publicly released the notice of intervention document we looked at earlier. They were probably sick of hearing all these public statements from Porter and Morrison about them not supporting Clive Palmer's case. After that document was released, the very next day, Scott Morrison wrote to confirm that he would withdraw from the case. What a coincidence. Only once WA released the letter showing that they had intervened in support of Clive Palmer did the Morrison government quickly withdraw. Now there could be a bunch of reasons for the government's U-turn. The first is that the WA public were overwhelmingly supportive of the border restrictions and overwhelmingly negative about Clive Palmer. So I guess getting caught out supporting a lawsuit against Western Australia wasn't politically helpful. The second issue was that the pandemic was starting to really kick off in Australia and the federal government spending time trying to take down WA's border restrictions was a bad look. Whatever the reason, it's embarrassing to pretend like you aren't supporting the case against WA, only to run away when the truth comes out. So you might be saying, well, the government withdrew, so it's no big deal. And that's how some of the media looked at it as well. But what they didn't outline was that the damage had already been done. Hearings in the federal court had already concluded before the withdrawal. The judge noted that the Commonwealth had actively participated in the hearings. The Commonwealth called more witnesses than Clive Palmer did and was noted by the court as supporting Palmer's position. 
The Commonwealth also cross-examined all the witnesses and made opening and closing submissions. After the Commonwealth withdrew, Western Australia tried to get a retrial so that the Commonwealth's evidence wouldn't be considered. But in rejecting a new trial, the judge had some interesting observations. However unfair Western Australia perceives the actions of the Commonwealth to be, they are done and cannot be undone. The unfairness was not caused by the Commonwealth's decision to withdraw, but by the decision to intervene in support of Clive Palmer's case in the first place. Basically, the damage had already been done. Saying that the Commonwealth did not pursue this case is just denial of reality. But the rewriting of history had just begun. Scott Morrison was sweating that things were going downhill in WA now that they knew he had supported Clive Palmer. So he just started making up facts to calm the political backlash. On the 6th of August 2020, a few days after the withdrawal, Scott Morrison went on Perth radio. He desperately tried to act as if the whole thing was just a legal technicality that people shouldn't worry about. He wanted everyone to know that he had just swooped in and fixed everything. To save you 15 minutes of cringing, I've picked out the relevant parts. Why did the federal government back the Clive Palmer case in the first place? Well, I just answered that. I mean, it is the normal practice on any constitutional case like this. I mean, it's all, it's all the legal stuff. But I mean, when any constitutional case of this nature goes before the High Court, the High Court expects the Commonwealth to actually participate. That's the expectation on us. So we were following the normal legal precedent in these cases. But now you pulled but out. In this one, in this one, we, I made the exception. He's trying to have it both ways and pass it off as just legal stuff. On one hand, he's saying that there is an expectation for the government to be involved in these cases. But then, for some reason, he's made an exception in this case. Remember, though, he withdrew after the damage was already done. If it was really a case of making an exception, it should have happened at the start, not after he was caught out. But more importantly, the whole narrative that the government was expected to intervene to support Clive Palmer is nonsense. Legal experts have clarified that the government could have intervened the other way, to support WA, but chose to support Clive Palmer instead. Well, we're out of the case. Um, I mean, the Premier, when he wrote to me, on, he asked me to get out. So we got out, just like he asked. He didn't ask us to do a whole range of other things. He just said, will you get out now? And so I said, yes. So we've done that. What total rubbish. He's acting as if he just got a text from Mark McGowan saying, please get out, and he just agreed because they're just such great mates. Mark McGowan has been publicly calling for the Commonwealth to withdraw a number of times in the weeks before it happened. This press conference was almost a month before the withdrawal. The High Court challenge consumes the resources of many of our top public servants, from our Solicitor General, our Chief Health Officer and our Police Commissioner. In light of the new New South Wales Victoria border closure today, I have asked the Prime Minister to formally withdraw their support from Clive Palmer's High Court challenge. It does not make sense for the federal government to be supporting a border closure between New South Wales and Victoria, but on the other hand, challenging West Australia's border in the High Court of Australia. Quite frankly, the legal challenge, and especially the Commonwealth's involvement in it, has now become completely ridiculous. This nonsense has to stop, and it has to stop now. The other thing is, when I wrote back to Premier McGowan last week, and I said to him, I said, look, Mark, there are a couple of things you could do to help your own case here. Um, and, and they were pretty simple things. We wanted to help, so there we are. What a nice guy. He just wanted to help. And now he's even giving constitutional advice to WA. It's marketing spin at its best. So are your worries and concerns still that the repercussions of the Clive Palmer case is if he wins, then all of the state borders have to come down? So Queensland banning the southern states, New South Wales forcing anyone who's been in Victoria into hotel quarantine, that the High Court could say that they're unlawful. It's a free-for-all, Prime Minister. Well, look, I think that's a pretty extreme set of circumstances you've just outlined. I, I mean, my advice is that's pretty unlikely at that level. But, I mean, the High Court will, will have its own mind and, and it has discretion to, to make its own judgments. I can't read their mind as to what they're going to do. Except he does think he can read the High Court's mind. This is from an earlier press conference where he was predicting that WA would lose. 
Well, let me be clear. Um, we're not supporting Clive Palmer. Um, an action has been brought in relation to the WA border. It goes to quite serious constitutional issues, which the Commonwealth uh, could not be silent about. And my concern is that it is, it is highly likely that the constitutional position that is being reviewed in this case uh, will not fall in the Western Australian government's favour. But the Western Australian government didn't lose. In November 2020, even with the Commonwealth's assistance, the High Court ruled against Clive Palmer. The court ruled the WA's border rules in their application to an emergency, constituted by the occurrence of a hazard in the nature of a plague or epidemic, complied with the constitutional limitations of Section 92 of the Constitution. In other words, the border rules were constitutional. But that wasn't the worst of it. The Labor Party wanted to find out how much it had cost taxpayers to support Clive Palmer's case. They asked the government seven separate times, and each time they got referred to this letter from Christian Porter in response. It basically said that the answers can't be provided yet because that would be against the public interest. Ten months later, just enough time for the heat to have passed, the government finally responded to the repeated questions with an answer for costs. The costs are primarily for the Clive Palmer case, but also some minor costs are attributed to similar cases brought against Queensland, which never really got off the ground. The government spent over $1 million of taxpayers' money in the intervention. It diverted 2,445 working hours away from the Australian government solicitor's office as the pandemic was taking hold in Australia. To add to this, the government paid $40,000 of public funds to pay Clive Palmer's legal fees directly. All this money wasted for a case they apparently did not pursue. So it's no wonder that Scott Morrison is desperate to rewrite history and avoid the wrath of WA. Unfortunately for him, he's lying about things that are in the public domain. We know that the Commonwealth was heavily involved in the case supporting Clive Palmer. We know that they withdrew after the damage had already been done. And we know that it cost us as taxpayers over a million dollars when time and money should have been spent elsewhere.